Today on To The Point, it is really hard to believe that So You Think You Can Dance, season six, was 10 years ago. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. Welcome on into the point with Kristen Burt. And I'm so excited about today's guest because we haven't seen each other in about six years, which is ridiculous. <laughs> um, and it's her 10-year anniversary from doing season six, So You Think You Can Dance, where she made the top eight. Molly Gray. Hello. Good to see you again. How are you, stranger? <laughs> oh, I'm good. How about yourself? Been good. Lots going on. We both yeah. got married over yes, we the, both the time. Got married. Yes. Yay okay for that. Your wedding photos, I got to tell oh. you, were spectacular. Thank you. Um, yeah, she was actually incredible, and I had never even met her before. She was up in the Tahoe area, and I was just looking up photographers because it was coming down to the wire, and I didn't find somebody that aesthetically I really liked. Yes. And then um, when I looked on her page, like one of her first couples was like a lesbian couple, and I was like, oh, so she should, uh, supports the LGBTQ community right. and won't be judgmental with fil um, filming and taking photos of our wedding, and then they actually ended up being stunning, and I was like, yes. And they were in People <laughs> Magazine. I know. <laughs> I know. I remember that, too. And I don't know. I mean, it was, we got married what, 2017? Two years ago, yeah. Because okay. I'm like, I'm so I definitely didn't look at the magazine, so I saw it online. Because I'm like, yeah. did I open a magazine? Yeah. No, I saw it online. But I was like, those are some spectacular yeah, ones. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we it went it went pretty viral. It was so crazy how many, like, outlets picked it up. And Jack and I were just sitting at home like, oh, my gosh. It's so cool, though. Yeah, I it mean, was really And cool. I think, too, you know, it's, it's interesting. We've had a lot of discussions here on this particular podcast. We yeah. don't talk enough about, which is weird to me, about LGBTQ issues in the dance community. Right. Yeah. So I, you know, when we see representation of it, I'm always like, right on. Yeah. And in People Magazine, go for it. Yeah, totally. That really, that, you know, everyone sees that. Yeah. No, absolutely. Thank <laughs> I, you. I bet you got like phone calls and texts from people you hadn't heard from in years. Oh, yeah, totally. It was so crazy because even like, um, as small as like opening Snapchat, it was one of the like Daily Mail and it was like, it was literally in every hour. It was insane. And I and I was so nervous. It was kind of like an amazing feeling. So I was so nervous at first to kind of come out and what that would do. And what year did you actually like publicly come out? Publicly came out, um, I think 2017, like right before I got okay. married. My publicist, Jessica, was like, you are about to get married. You're going to your bridal shower. It might have been like a few months before, maybe two, end of 2016. Um, and she was like, you are about to have the best day of your life. And the fact that you can't share that, um, you're going to regret it later on. And I sat on it and I was like, you're right. Like, I don't know what I'm scared of. You know, and then as soon as I did come out, there was like a little backlash with some like random people who follow me, you know, but that's never been like, never affected me too much. So when I saw all the positivity of after we got married, like I just, I had a moment where I just cried. I was just like, this is so real. This is awesome. And it just felt like people saw me for me and I wasn't hiding who I was so anymore. real you. Yeah, exactly. I also think it's important because uh, you're from Utah. You yeah. grew up Mormon, correct? Yes, yes. I think it's really important to talk about um, people of the Mormon faith who are embracing. Totally. Um, the community yeah and I, because I think there's stereotypes in that too <laughs> yeah. and I don't think that's fair yeah no totally I mean I grew up I was baptized um I didn't practice as much but I was like definitely you know involved um when I could and all my friends were very like religiously Mormon mm -hmm. um I guess I was never really like my parents never told me like this is right and this is wrong like loving certain people wasn't right or wrong I was always just taught to kind of just love and right. to me whatever that vision was is what I was able to take and run with so um it's actually been cool because it's kind of tested that I've never felt like I was like I never thought growing up oh I'm a lesbian or oh I'm straight or oh I'm fluid I've those words never were kind of a part right. of me I always just loved somebody and um which is interesting now with Jekka is because we got married um as a lesbian couple essentially and mm -hmm. now Jekka came out as transgender so is going and through transition and he's now my husband and it was kind of a true testament to I don't love a gender I just I fell in love you with love Jekka. Jekka yes and that's and so that's what um has been kind of cool to you know talk to people back from Utah and you know because people are like I didn't know you were gay and I was like but I'm not <laughs> you know like, like, I'm Molly yeah I was like I just I don't know I'm like i I'm in love with Cheka. It was so it was so hard to um, kind of like explain at first, but now especially with society evolving so much, it was just so much more accepting, and it's been really awesome. Good, and yeah. you know, and we like to hear that. And I think too, um, transgender, yeah, discussing all of that, understanding it, yeah. The more we talk about it, the better because yes, totally. it's so important. Because I'm still learning. I didn't even really know 
that word was not in my vocabulary growing up. And um, I don't even think that I mean, speaking with Jekka about it, Jekka didn't even really know what that mm -hmm. was. And now having so much more visibility on it and so much more um, stuff to read and from science and from the body and history and so many people that are just coming forth and being like, I have lived like this. It kind of normalizes it to the people who are going through um, the trauma of being transgender. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not like all of a sudden you wake up one day and, and, and <laughs> yeah. think, you know, wait, I... I was a girl, I'm a boy. No, right. wait. it's not that. It is mm. like from birth. Yes, and it's finally like, it's it's really cool um, to watch Jekka finally have a word that's able to define what he's been feeling his whole life and being the wife to support him and say, let's learn about this together. It's going to be a hard road. I get emotional. He gets emotional. There's pronouns. Sometimes we get mixed up and it's that, but that's what's so raw about the relationship. And we actually, that's why we started a YouTube is we started a YouTube channel to share that because Jekka had always wished that growing up there was people like him that were visible and vocal about it. So we're trying to be those people for um, people that. in our community. Yeah. We, um, my husband's family has a, uh, transgender, um, family member and mm -hmm. it, it, the pronouns I think are, are the struggle because, yeah. um, your brain and, and I'm, you know, oftentimes I mean no disrespect. And no, it's, totally. I, it's my mind and my, I met you, you were a boy. Yeah. Now you're a transgender woman and my pronoun and my brain are not all. They're yeah. Just not and it's all. just like ha almost habit where like you see that person and you use a certain pronoun and that, I, you know, it's going to, you know, take It just time. takes time. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I'm much, much better. And I was yeah. always like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Because <laughs> yeah. I felt like I didn't, I didn't want them to think it was <laughs> intentional totally. and trying to hurt them because I'm open yeah. and accepting to it because yeah. I know. No, totally. And that's what, um, I mean, Jekka has even mentioned, I'm sure, I can't speak for everyone, but I'm sure it's kind of the same as, as long as you um, correct it, like, oops, sorry, if maybe you said she and their pronoun is he, he or he, vice versa. Like, oh, I'm so sorry, he. Acknowledging rather than being like, oh, I, I don't know. Being you know? weird about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, like, yeah. the less weird about <laughs> yeah. it you are, the exactly. better. Exactly. Um, Jekka is also a dancer and choreographer. Yes. Has he encountered um, any difficulties or any challenges in the dance community, or are people pretty great? Yeah, um, it's been cool. Actually, we just had this conversation a couple days ago where um, he was like, I'm really glad that um, we rekindled, because we've been friends since 2009, mm -hmm. and then we rekindled our friendship, and it led to a relationship whenever, and he had said, I'm really glad that I met you because I feel like I wouldn't have pushed myself to continue dancing. And I was like, well, why? And growing up, he looked obviously very male, but was you know female at the time and would never want to put on heels and wear a bikini top and go to a dance audition mm -hmm. so he started getting really kind of um defeated and then um actually he auditioned for Ariana Grande and they hired Jekka for Jekka so at the time Jekka before transitioned got to dance in an all-female cast and represent that type of female that. that Jekka was it and makes then, me love Ariana I know, even more I know. too <laughs> yeah and so he's been yeah he's actually been working consistently and like as a transgender man now and just people like he doesn't have to be like do I go with the guys group do I go with the girls group do I have to tell them hey I you know this is just more he worked on a tv show called trans um uh, transparent which is they did the musical yeah so he just did that and there's just so many more opportunities for him now and he's just like glowing of opportunity and you know there wasn't all those opportunities well you're getting to do what you love but you're also getting to do it as as the yourself yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah you're authentic you're like right. i'm not feeling like who what what i, I don't know yeah you're exactly like, this is jacka i'm yeah. here yeah exactly and so i get yeah and so now he's he's working a lot and he's like i just can't believe it i never thought i, I never saw this in the cards for me i always thought i was just gonna you know Love dance and want to do it, but there was never a place for me in the industry, and now there is. Well, I'm glad too because yeah. obviously he has a supportive partner in you. Yeah, so thank you. That's I appreciate important. that. Yeah, yeah. no, it's important. <laughs> I think a lot of people don't realize that too because yeah. it's also your love and your understanding yes. of it too is is totally really important. So. <laughs> thank you. Um, how are you feeling? Ten years. <laughs> I can't believe it's been ten years. Now, for the all the youngsters that are listening to this one, um, <laughs> this was the only season that had two seasons a year. So yeah. season five was in the summer and yes. you were that quirky little, little fall, fall season. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. Um, 
yeah, it was crazy. It's it was all it was a little strange. We didn't do a tour or anything because it was so quick um, for the next season. So we were kind of bummed at the time, like, oh, we didn't get a tour. But actually, it kind of worked in all of our favor. We had just finished our season, and then we got to go into commercial work right after. So our face was still fresh, and we found kind of the positivity in that. Um, but yeah, it was. I feel like and like no shade to any other season. But um, I feel like we had like one of the strongest um, talented cast. We had a lot of really great diverse from ballet to ballroom to contemporary to boys to females to everything, crumping. Um, only only crump winner. Yeah, Russell so Ferguson. it was, I feel like it was um, kind of eye-opening and just kind of really set the bar for the rest of the seasons. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting to look back on. And I spoke with, earlier this year, I spoke with Eleanor Scott, mm. who is killing it. I love her so much. Working as yeah. a Broadway choreographer. Yeah. Um, but she said the same thing you did, which is interesting. Yeah. She said, we were so bummed about the tour. Yeah. But then I realized my agent was like, nope, you're going to hit the ground running. You're going to audition. Yeah. She said, we got a head start off of all the other people that were still on totally. tour. Yeah, exactly. season five. Exactly, because especially when you get off tour, then it's like, oh, the new season is about to start, and then you kind of, not that you don't remember the last season, but it's like you're already focused on what's happening next, even though they're still going on tour. And so now, to me, in my opinion, casting would be looking at who's relevant on television right now. Mm -hmm. And so we got right off television, we got right into the casting room for auditions. So it was... Um, Kind of a blessing in disguise. I was happy. I booked my first major movie as an actor um, right after with Ashton Kutcher and Emily Portman was my first thing. And I was like, I'm, I was Wait, like, let me just name drop that ready. Ashton I, Kutcher yeah, and Emily and, Portman. And that's what I mean. I, I would have never, there's no way. You, you would have been out of the loop. I would have been out. Of the it door. was interesting too. I went to a, one of the last stops that we did, I did Thousand Oaks for this year's the season mm. 16 tour. And they were all, I think they had five shows left at that point. Yeah. And they were all like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I mean, I was like, go rest your body. You've got the holidays, you know. And a right. couple people have convention um, have convention jobs coming up where they're assisting. And right. one of them's going in, back into High School Musical, the musical, the series, because right. she was a principal dancer. Um, but other everyone else is like, I don't know what to do. You know? yeah. and it, it, so there is something about, yeah. like, missing the tour and then yeah. just jumping I mean, into professional life. I mean, it would be, life. like, for me... Um, that's what, like, when I had to make the decision between, or the choice between dance and acting, um, it was, I was going to an audition for Taylor Swift's tour, and Ty Stewart was choreographing it, and I was assisting him a lot, and I thought, in that moment, I had a really good chance of booking it. I didn't, like, book it, but I had a really great chance, and I thought, you know what, I'm not going to go to the audition, because it would put me out of acting auditions for like two years. And that like, and first of all, I'm like diehard Taylor Swift fan. So for me to be like, it's I'm a big global tour. Yes, and that's huge. So for me in my mind to say, I'm not going to go to this audition that I probably could book, put into a lot of um, everything into perspective that acting was kind of my choice that I really wanted to go into. Um, so I was never a person that really dreamed about going on tour. So not going on tour after So You Think didn't really affect okay. me too much. But Do you think, because uh, this is kind of interesting, because I, I worked as a professional dancer a million years ago, but yeah. um, that it, there is that day, and it's not like a, and I talked about this with Casey Money last week, you know, yeah. he's kind of working as a dancer choreographer right now. And yeah, I said, he's killing are it. you, he is, he's doing great. Yeah. But I said, are you starting to feel like, oh, the dance thing's starting to like go behind it. I'm like, you are going to wake up one day and realize, oh, choreography just took over. And right. kind of with me, I was like, oh, like the hosting reporting thing just took yeah. over. And, I, you know, you're going to like one less dance class. Yeah, totally. One less audition. And you're making those choices. Yeah, well, and for me, it's, um, I mean, I still love, love to dance. I travel every weekend for conventions. And um, that's kind of what fuels me to keep up my acting career um, and not have to have the technical nine to five. And, you know, I, yep. which is, I'm very blessed because I get to do both things that I really love. But what was happening is I was working a lot as a dancer and doing a lot of TV shows and movies. Um, and then I would get an audition as a recurring on that show or a guest star. And I would do well in the audition, but then producers would say, well, she's already been on the show as a dancer. So we can't have a new character come in when she's already done as a dancer, so it started affecting the work, mm -hmm. um, and that's why I made the choice. Not not because I, I don't love it, because I do, I love to dance still, but um, I've actually migrated my passion so much into teaching. I love, love, it's love to good. teach. So these this generation of kids are so good. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I sit there and I think, how can you be so good at twelve? What What are you going to be like at twenty <laughs> two? <laughs> right, right, and yeah, like I'm, I am just like I can't wait to see what everyone does. I, I have a little bit of um, nervousness in me that a lot of them might get burned out. 
you know? I'm the same thing. Yeah, yeah or worked. like I tried to like preach in my classes. Um, you know, everyone was so gung-ho about getting Instagram followers and they're like, Instagram's never gonna go away. But now look at TikTok is the new rising thing. And so now everyone's getting a TikTok. So I try to tell people there's always gonna be a new fad, especially in social media. But if you can just perfect your craft and you stay humble and a good human being, that's what's gonna get you booked. Not just, because people, People's like profiles get wiped all the time too, or you get you know you get hacked. Or yeah, something so it's and... like, but you know, if you're if you're keeping up with your craft and you're being a good human, that's what's gonna get you booked. Not you know, the the crazy followers and um, of course that's gonna help. It, you it know? helps. It gets you in the door, I think yeah. for sure. And I think that um, we've had plenty of choreographers on their show, and they're like, you know, the ones I work over and over again with me, or you know, they're kind of in my little talent pool circle yeah yeah it's not necessarily ones with the best technique it's the ones that have the heart the ones that are kind in the rehearsal room Mm -hmm. put in 100 percent effort yeah no attitude yeah it's those things yeah and it's like sometimes you know i don't know it's like i have a little sister who's seven her name is star and she dances and i have to like remind like my mom you know she's only seven because she's like wicked good and um i was like the thing that we have to focus on with star is because like you know she's growing up in that age where like a lot of the, the young kids like feel like they like rule the world you know what I mean yes. <laughs> which is totally like whatever no like, fear <laughs> yeah no fear and um but it's like making sure that that um doesn't uh correlate or show ego egotistical vibes or yeah. anything you there, know there's a difference between confidence and overconfidence yes too. exactly and um believing what you're po- posting on social media versus your real life, you know? It's like I, I told my mom, I was like, Star is getting really good. I was like, don't worry about if she doesn't have the followers yet. She's getting really good. And I have to remind my mom, like, people who post on social media, I was like, even my life is not exactly how I'm portraying it to be, you know? Mm-mm. I try to be very transparent, but there's still days when I'm sitting home in my pajamas and I'm posting a picture from a photo shoot. You know what I mean? Right. So I was like, I was like, you have to allow yourself to, you know, Stay true to your craft. Stay humble. Keep working towards it because pe- that's what people are gonna hire. They're not just gonna hire because if you if you have a bunch of followers, they'll hire you. And if you don't have that, um, like, the will to to know how to be on set, then you're not gonna get rehired. Yeah. On set decorum, work yes. ethic, like yes. there's so many things that go Respect. into. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's funny because sometimes people are like, oh, like the. The people that make it meet sometimes to the top four are not the ones that are out there working all the time. Sometimes it's right. someone that got voted off first. Totally. Actually, your season is a great example of that because Ariana is about to go off and do West Side Story. She already filmed it, but yeah. West Side Story was Steven Spielberg. Yeah, that's And huge. she was nominated for a Tony. And yeah. I mean, that that is the thing. Like, you yeah. can't just assume, like, yeah. because you are were America's favorite dancer or almost America's favorite dancer. Right. Doesn't or always translate. Or even, like... Um, or even like Travis, he auditioned a few times before he even got on the show, and then look, at, you know, Jeff he, didn't want him. He's yeah, been very uh, yeah. About so that. then it's like, so that's just a testament to it. You know what I mean? Like you have to. Twitch showed up, I think, three or four times yeah. to auditions oh, too. I love him. Oh, yeah. Well, who doesn't love Twitch? Yeah. You know what I mean, like we all love Twitch, but yeah. I mean, and he, he and Allison have carved out an incredible, a beautiful career. life. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful family. Yes. Beautiful career. But they're also that's like another testament to is like they are the nicest. I mean, me and Allie grew up together, and we grew up in the same studio in Utah right next to each other, and she's always been like that. She's never, like, lost sight of, oh, now she's very much in the media and famous presence with her husband. She's never been, like, you know, a diva or whatever. She's That's just how she's been her whole life, just very humble, very grateful, counts her blessings, and that's that's what I truly think. That's why she's blowing up so much, and that's why she... You know, Jack and I always talk about you've your frequency and your vibrations, and you vibrate um, with people on the same vibration that you give off. So if you're like constantly like trying to, you know, get more, and I'm working hard, and I'm humble, and I'm grateful, and I wake up, and what am I doing to better my career? You're gonna find that same like frequency with each other. Right. But then if you know if you have a friend that's like, mm, I don't really want to do anything, your vibrations don't match, and you eventually start going towards something else and I think that like Allie and Steven's and Twitch's like vibrations are just yeah isn't there a saying like your vibe is your tribe kind of thing so, like yeah. you want to be with hard workers positive people good totally. people because that's what is going to be thrown out there to the universe we talk yes. about that all the time on yeah. the show too and, but it is and like minded too it's like you have better conversations that you don't get caught up in gossip or you know 
thinking about what so and so is doing, you know, you're being that so and so that people are talking about because you're so focused and working hard and trying to better your craft. Yeah, your only competition is yourself, really. And exactly. the end, yeah. I know, and I know that this business likes to pit everyone against each other, and there's yeah. always that same person that it's like either you get the job or the other person gets the job and you right. show up to the same audition and you're like oh my gosh we're oh the God. last two again it <laughs> yeah. happens to everyone totally uh, yeah. my, my competition moved to Las Vegas and has <laughs> a great job but I love her and she and I were great yeah. friends we go out for coffee and I'd be like well if I'm gonna lose out on this job I'm so it's glad you. it's yeah. you <laughs> totally and it happened I cannot tell you how many I mean I don't have enough hands for it yeah no I mean and that's just kind of what's expected in business and that's where you see the true people who um rise because of you know you get there's a saying, you get told no 10 times, you get told yes one, you know. Um, sometimes people don't get told yes for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Jared Leto, for instance, one of my favorites, he didn't book a movie for like, it was like 10 years or something, 10, 14 years, and then he does a movie and gets nominated for it, you know, and now he's... So you just got to trust yourself and keep going. I know. I know. It's, it's when it's those 10 years, I'm like, what kept him going every single day or every yeah. single rejection? Because yeah, it's hard. What keeps you going when you get rejected? Because it's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Um... You know, it's to remind myself, actually, Jack is a really, really great partner in doing this, is um, to remember all my accomplishments. Because I feel like I'm getting to the age where I'm like, I need to be at this point in my career. I need to be doing this and I need to be a series regular or the, booking this big box office thing. And then I forget all of the stuff that I have done. And um, to... So that's kind of what keeps me going is like, remember all the no's that you got told and then you booked the lead in this Lifetime movie. Remember all the no's you got told and then you booked the lead in Reliant, you know? So it's like, I keep telling myself, you've been here before. You've been here where you almost like, can I do it? And then you come out on the other side. So um, I'm not one to give up either. <laughs> like, there's no way. <laughs> well, I actually, stubborn. <laughs> I thrive on competition. Um, I've always been like that, even with dance. Mm -hmm. um, I, this is like a, such a funny story. One of my, my really great friends, Kayla Radomski, who's also on the show, um, we grew up together too. And I think I was... I was about nine, she was maybe 10, and she was really good. We were at NYCDA Nationals, and the faculty kept watching her. And I was like, what is up with this girl? Why are they not looking at me? So I, wa I didn't go in the group. I watched Kayla, and I saw how good she was. I was like, oh, my gosh. And I was like, well, if I'm going to get noticed, I need to go dance right next to Kayla because I know I'm good, but they're watching her. So if I can stand by her and they can see that I'm good, they're going to watch me. So that's what I did, and I ended up getting their attention, and we were able to, like, you know, then Kayla and I danced together throughout the Nationals. And um, that's the type of, like, healthy competition I like. is Rise with each other. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like, I didn't look at Kayla and go, oh, gosh she's great like I'm not gonna talk to her I was like I need to be standing by her I need her energy I want to be friends with her I want to know her mind I want to like use that to help me get better and vice versa which actually ended up being hilarious because we had the exact same tap solo you <laughs> like, did yeah it was really weird like the choreographer that um the choreographer that choreographed it he choreographed me and her solo the exact same and we were she was practicing or I was practicing I can't remember exactly and we were like, wait, that's my solo. And she was like, wait, no that's... idea you guys would wind up at the same no, convention. No, And um, so we were like, ooh, this is bad. So we, we didn't use that choreographer ever again. But it was pretty crazy. I that's was like, like, bring it on. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So yeah, Kayla and I have been, yeah, just, it's been, and she does a lot of acting too now, which we get to kind of share experiences with. And yeah. That's great. Yeah, though. you guys really go. Cool. Were you a center stage kid? No, I grew up at the dance club. The dance club, because I yeah. know everyone's like either one or the yeah, other. Yeah, so me, Ali, Randy, Lynn, we all grew up at the dance club. And then all the like ballroom people um, grew up at Center, Center stage. stage. Yeah. It's so amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. The history and the legacy. But I feel like all of you at some point wound up working on High School Musical. Which oh, totally. Yeah. I loved I was like, I rewatched your, your So You Think audition. And I was like, she's such a baby. But you're like, oh, I've been around. I'm a principal dancer. You started at 13 doing <laughs> yeah. High School Musical. Yeah. So I um, I actually did my first like professional job is um, in 2002 with the Olympics. Which a lot of people do with Kenny. Yeah. Ortega. Yeah. yeah. So um, I did like a commercial for that. And then I did a t um, um a movie called Out of Step when I was 11, and then I did High School Musical when I was 13. And then I was 16 during the second one and 17 during the third one. Can we show, yeah, look at that red carpet photo of you. Oh Alex. my God. Come on, that is so cute. I found that and I was like, she's gonna kill me for pulling it. And I think no, it's, it's great, I love it. It's, the dress is everything. Yeah. I was like, I kind of would wanna wear that now because yeah, it's so cute. I got so many compliments on that dress. And you know what, I found it on like, 
I googled, I was like, um, cute dresses you would wear to prom or on a red carpet, because I was still living in Utah, I didn't know anything You're about like, it. I don't know how to, yeah. And I found it, um, I can't even remember the website, and then I just had it like mailed to me, and then I like floofed it out and yeah, brought it. There's a ton of photos of it actually on, um, yeah, on Google. That's crazy. <laughs> and um, oh my gosh. one is cuter than the other. I mean, they're just yeah, so cute. Oh my gosh, my little chubby cheeks. No, but it's I so it. adorable. <laughs> I look don't look that much older than No, there. you don't. And I was like, that's a funny thing because I'm like, you're still so young, but I, I bet yeah. you still get called in at least college. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've never played over 21. Actually, it's so funny. I was headed to teach out um, in the South somewhere the other week, and I obviously didn't travel with makeup and sweats on, and I was sitting in the exit row, and the um, the stewardess was saying, you know, you got to make sure you help out or, you know, pull the thing, just doing the safety thing. And in the middle of it, she looks at me and she goes, and how old are you? And I was like, me? And then I told her my age and she was like, oh, I'm so sorry. You look so great. I was like, thank you. And then Jekka and I last week were in New York and I called down to get a late checkout. And I was like, hi, excuse me. I was wondering if I could get a late checkout. And he goes, one moment, please. I was like, okay. And then he comes back and he's like, what did you need? I said, can I please get a late checkout? And he goes, I'm going to need to speak with your parents. <laughs> and I like, was like, what? My parents said, are in Utah I'm right now. <laughs> woman. Yeah. And then, yeah, they ended up like comping it. But I was just like, which was, I wasn't like that offended. I'm starting to learn like it's a compliment. It's a great thing. Yeah. I'm like, when you're like 60 years old yeah. and you look 30, yeah. you're going to be so And my happy. mom looks super young too. But yeah, I haven't played over 21. That's great. Yeah. And I just chopped my hair. I had I have it up right now, but I chopped it shorter cuz to give make me look a little bit older cuz I was still getting called in for high school and I had my long hair. Um and which is fine. Like I don't mind looking high school, but then maybe my age kind of. You know what's interesting? Um it, when you get called in sometimes like for high school when you're a lot older, mm -hmm. um your maturity gives you away and yeah. sometimes they're looking for a little bit more mm. innocence. And you're totally. like, I'm married. I'm married. You know, right. I've traveled. Like, you yeah, know what I mean? And then, like lived out here. <laughs> yeah. And then they, they kind of go, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and exactly. that's so, yeah, probably like just even doing a little like, like little chop chop. Little and, chop chop. Yeah. You know, and then you're like, great, I'm in college. Yeah. I can exactly. Do that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I can be believable holding like a drink during a scene or something. <laughs> totally. Exactly. I know. Before they're like, underage <laughs> drinking. <laughs> Don't, yeah. do Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> no. Yeah. Talk about um, your recent role in The Reliant because yeah. it's kind of a cool action movie. Yeah, it's yeah my first major action movie, <sighs> which I, I just like now I'm like fully in love with action movies. I want to do it all the time. I've always wanted to do like Marvel or DC or something where I can use my dance and acrobatic background because um, I'm super athletic. I have an athletic build, so I would love to have a character like that. And then I read the script of The Reliant, which is awesome, and I had to do weapon training, and I had to do, yeah, all that. I got tackled by Brian Bosworth, which was really cool. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it was kind of my first, like, I've, I've led a couple films, like on Lifetime or TV movies, but this was my first one where I led with, like, a lot of, um, like, a lot of oomph in the character. And Gravitas. Was, yeah, it was, like, <laughs> me, Kevin Sorbo, Brian Bosworth, and Eric Roberts were... Kind of like the four. Eric Roberts <laughs> yeah. is so nice. Yeah, he's a, he's a sweetheart. He's so like, he has a great personality too. He's and his super wife, funny. Is it Eliza? Yes, she is lovely. Yeah. I interviewed. Her. I did like a thirty yeah. minutes sit down interview with him about his heart. Actually, he yeah, had um, AFib, atrial fibrillation, and yeah. and almost died because of it. Yeah. and has an incredible story about it. Actually. Yeah, so he's yeah, so his like he just lives his life, which is so inspiring just to like talk. Too and just yeah, he's he's really cool and then um, yeah. So it's my character basically. Um, she's she. It's interesting because the economy collapses and they go into a huge kind of riot war breaks out. Um, and she's very very religious, very much believes in um, not harming anybody, obviously not killing anybody, mm -hmm. um, and doing whatever it takes to keep her family alive. Um, so she won't ever use guns. She's very much against guns, even though there's people shooting at the family and all that. Um, she like, sh she almost thinks of them as like too too much of a sinner. So she like puts them puts them out, and then, but in the midst of it, everything she realizes that you know her faith is the strongest thing, and she also is a sinner, and all this. So it's like it's so much kind of complexity within one character and then her younger brother doesn't believe at all and so I'm trying to convince him and um 
you know, that God is good, even though that our family members have died. So it's just like this whole twist of um, craziness and irony and faith. And um, she eventually kind of pulls through. I won't give away the ending. It's out now um, on all digital and Target, Walmart, DVD, everything. So it has a really, really powerful ending. And it was kind of cool just to kind of play a character that was so um, in-depth and something that I had Many to... Many layers. Yeah, I had to really reach for it. It wasn't something that just came naturally. And it's been a while since I've had a character kind of like that. So uh, Kevin Sorbo is huge in the faith-based market, too. Yes. He's, he's like... A, I mean, besides being Hercules, he's Hercules, yeah, right? Hercules, yeah, Hercules, yeah. Um, he's like a superstar in yeah. this market, too. So. Yeah, God's Not Dead is... Uh, like, it was one of the biggest films, yeah. yeah. Have you um, heard from a lot of the um, sort of faith-based... M- movie fans because I don't I don't know if people if you don't follow it yeah. and I do because I follow box office and every time like all of a sudden a movie will come out of left field and we're like it just made top 10 of the box office yeah and like what yeah um actually this was my first faith-based film I ever even um really went out for and read for and I didn't really know what to expect I just thought it's just another film you know you go mm-hmm. on and do your job but everyone was very very passionate everyone was, it was a very um religious atmosphere of just kind of we were all there for one purpose and it was to kind of serve the message through the film which was really mm-hmm. nice um i don't get a lot of messages um through like social media or anything i've gotten like really great reviews from maybe sites about the film mm-hmm. or um you know because it's my first faith-based film a lot of like breakout acting in the faith-based stuff but um yeah it's been great we for a couple weeks were um in the top 10 on amazon and we were number one action faith-based film for um six days in a row which is great and sold out fully so yeah yeah it was cool i'm like yeah i don't give away the ending but is there a possibility of a sequel um yes okay i know oftentimes with action films they leave that little opening yeah yeah (laughs) there's um yeah, there's definitely um, some room for a sequel there. So I know, and if you have Kevin Sorbo, I'm like, you got to bring him back. Yeah, no, <laughs> totally. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. You gotta watch it. It's cool. Okay, I will. <laughs> yeah. That's I know. Now I'm intrigued. But yeah. I was, what is it like doing your own stunts? Because I always like to think in my head, like I just do stunts, and it's but it's not that easy. Yeah, no, it's not easy, and it's also kind of depends on the contract too. Like you have to be safe and everything. Um, Did you have a stunt double? I did not, but I didn't have to do anything like too crazy. Um, Brian tackles me at one point because he's one of the kind of bad guys and he's he starts off as one of the bad guys and he's trying to um, get to us and all of our weapons that was kind of the most mm, like Physical, stunty yeah. thing everything else was um like so my little sister gets shot and I had to pick her up and I have to carry her and run through the woods fun, which though. was it was great and she's, she's really alive yeah right and she's um <laughs> But it's like it, that was like the draining kind of stunt stuff where I was having to run and jump over the woods and everything. And we had live animals in this. We had like um, real snakes. We had real deer. We had real raccoons. Um, I think that was probably the scariest. The scariest was the raccoon because <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was kind of terrifying. But we had to like walk through this um, kind of abandoned. I don't even know what it was. This like building thing but it was just it was all broken so things were falling and that was kind of the most scary thing because it was very unpredictable yep and then putting a raccoon in there this we were like hunting and I was is like, it, is, it's a hollywood raccoon though um yeah okay i'm like so he's at yeah. least trained he's yeah. not like this rabid raccoon no you got and in the- so like but like he was trained to jump and run like oh at a gosh. certain point but they didn't tell us when that was going to happen because they needed a real reaction. They needed to startle you. Yeah, so, yeah, it was pretty fun, but, yeah. I got a pet a deer, which was crazy. Oh. Yeah. I was like, a little deer. <laughs> now, was that, like, a Hollywood deer, too? Yeah, so, basically, so this guy out in Ohio owns this, like, huge, um, like, just acres and acres of all these animals that are just, he had to kind of, like, rehabilitate or something. I mean, we can't go into the wild and um, get to use them. And, you know, we get we got to pet them and hang out with them and... Yeah, it was kind of cool. There's like geese and stuff. Yeah, I've I've worked with Hollywood Dog before. I did a whole series for like Purina that oh, I hosted cool. with this dog who actually just passed away a little Aww. bit ago. But I worked with him about ten years ago, and it was the sweetest dog. And it, but it's yeah. There was times that we were told like he's working, so you know mm-hmm. treat him in work mode. Totally. Now he's off work. Like the dog even had like yeah. A, knew when he was yeah like more responsible than us <laughs> yes where I'm like whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. and then they're like come on yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> get serious I'm like okay, okay sorry okay, okay. <laughs> yeah I got this yeah but yeah it's, so it's it's really interesting when you work with 
trained animals and we're not talking about like your dog or cat like knowing right. one trick this yeah. is these animals know yeah it was it was and actually it was the irony of it there's this um one scene where um we're pretending to not we're pretending but we're supposed to look like we're hunting this deer and it like walks by and they allude to we're gonna like do an arrow to it and um but we never like could find a dead deer like we didn't kill the deer and the day that we had um that scene it was like a couple weeks later the day we had the scene where we're supposed to be like cooking it and having like a, our first meal in so long um there actually was like roadkill on the side of the road oh coming and i know that sounds crazy and it was a deer and so i was like is this you, is this for real like or this, was this planned and they actually ended up using like the roadkill yeah but i mean it yeah, this sounds so awful. Just but, makes it realistic. Yeah, I mean, and they, they but they like skinned it, like skin, like the I don't know. It was bleh, gross. But I'm like I'm vegan, so <laughs> I, was like, I don't know mm. if I would be eating deer either. So. Yeah, no. I, I mean, they gave us like beef jerky. You know, it's like, but it was the allude, the allude, illusion of this deer. But even like the beef jerky, yeah, I was like, I know. See, that's when you're acting. You're like, I've got to eat beef jerky. Like yeah, this is the delicious. best thing, and I haven't eaten in weeks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's when you're like dig deep yeah, like, dig deep Molly yeah <laughs> got this yeah <laughs> that's amazing though I mean what a cool experience because yeah. you're so out of your element you know yeah versus doing like a teen beach movie yeah exactly that's yeah, what, yeah you know. like I'm obviously super grateful for all my Disney stuff I've done and but it was more of like I'm, I have a very bubbly personality anyway and so it was easy to kind of like pull into those characters yeah I understand that where um I mean the lifetime ones were kind of tough too. Um, like I, one of them, I, I did Double Daddy. I had to play like sixteen and pregnant, and which the is, lifetime themes of oh, these I movies know. are amazing, it's crazy. And they've yeah. got a great series of um, holiday movies right now too. Yes, I know. Have you done one yet? I have not done a um, like a Christmas movie or holiday movie. I think you're perfect for one I would, too. Yeah, I would love to. I just are you going to be a bookstore owner, a florist, um, <sighs> or know, maybe a baker? Yeah, I would think maybe like I'm a baker and then, I, you know, I, my heart gets broken. So I go to a, a Christmas outing with, you know, Santa Claus and I bump into somebody <laughs> in my, like my Prince Charming. And yeah. the romance begins. Totally. Want to put, bake but he, him but cookies. He's a, but he's about to buy your building and your bakery might uh, have no, to go out of business. So we <laughs> have to create the conflict, Molly. Oh my gosh, let's just write it. Let's write it right I now. I know. I think we should let's, do let's it. Let's start it. And we also have to decide um, whether it's going to be Hallmark mm. or whether it's going to be Lifetime. And they have yeah. Lifetime's a little more edgy. Yes. You can actually allude to the fact that maybe there was some hanky-panky going yeah, on. Yeah, that, that's Hallmark, true. there's we none of that. We can up the rating a little bit. We can. I, I find the Lifetime movie a little more diverse too. Yeah, um, it looks more like a yeah. normal city. No, totally. <laughs> like my first lifetime movie, um, I played. Yeah, like um, I got, I got pregnant at sixteen, and how dare you? Yeah, I know. And then she, there was another character, and she like, kind of made my boyfriend at the time get her pregnant too because she was trying to get his money, and so that was like really crazy. And then like a couple years later, I did another lifetime and I was a lawyer I was in law school and I got kidnapped by this guy who like owned a gym and was it based off a true story because sometimes they are yeah um no I don't think so not okay. these ones yeah and um what that one was fun though because I got to be like chained and like fight for my life and like escape escape and stuff like that but um yeah I don't know I think maybe I would want to do a Hallmark one because I haven't done something like yeah. uplifting kind of like Yeah. That. And those also have an undercurrent of faith. They don't like, yes. they're not like the faith-based films where they openly discuss it. Right. It's just like right below the yeah. surface. Like, like it's a Christmas miracle. Yes, totally. And if like you're like a firm believer, you can see it. But if you're not religious, you don't like think it's preachy. Exactly. It yeah. works for everyone. Yes, I know. <laughs> you have to, yeah, maybe like having the cred of like, because you already have Lifetime on your resume. Yeah. So having like the street cred of like, yeah. I did a Hallmark Christmas and movie. Yeah. In July. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, I was in Vancouver and it was hot or whatever. Yeah. No, yeah. I thought it'd be fun. That'd be so fun. Yeah. Let's put it out there. Yeah. I joke. I'm Hallmark like, movie. We're, we're manifesting things on this show. Oh, I love manifesting. Yeah. Like, and I was never like a huge believer in manifesting. I was just like, my coach always tells me the harder you work, the luckier you get, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, a couple of years ago, right before actually my first major lead my first lifetime movie double daddy um we jekka and i were moving into the master bedroom and in the, in the house we lived with a bunch of our our friends and we were moving in and jekka goes let's manifest i want to sit in this room because this is our new room let's put good vibes in here and we brought a candle in and we said everything that we wanted to kind of do and i put my very first script i ever worked on as an actor 
right there and I said, I want to book a lead in a movie. And I kid you not, like I swear on anything, two weeks later, I didn't even audition for Double Daddy. I got an offer <gasps> because of like the, I had auditioned with the casting before and they, I was in Ohio at my best friend's place and my manager called me. She was like, did you get my email? And I was like, no, what no, happened? What is happening? They were like, you just got offered the lead role in a Lifetime movie. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh. Like, and it was just so crazy because I literally had just said it. So ever since then, I'm the one that's like, if I'm thinking of something in my car, I roll it down, roll the window down, I'm throw it out into the universe. Screaming yeah. while driving on the 405. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, what are we going to manifest for 2020 for you, Molly? Oh, man. Um, roundabout thing, I want something just major um, acting to just kind of really set me, set me off. I would really love to be a series regular on a TV show. <gasps> uh -huh. Do you have a, a genre that you kind of gravitate towards? Like, if, if it's TV, you're. You, you want to do the drama, you want to do the comedy, or kind yeah. of the dramedy, <laughs> a little bit of Yeah, so, you know, I used to be like, I want to be a drama actor, you know, because everything that I was doing comedy was more like Disney, mm -hmm. um, which wasn't a bad thing, but I always thought, you know what, I'm going to make my mark, I'm going to go into drama, I'm going to show that I'm a serious actor, and I love drama, but I'm also like, my, my natural kind of gift is in comedy, like, that's kind of, I have really, like... You have good timing. I have good timing, and I love sketch comedy. Like, I am a goofball. I can, I'm, I'm not afraid of looking ugly or, you know, like, SNL would be so much fun for me. Mm -hmm. So um, once I started learning more about the industry, um, like, a dramedy would be just, like, my favorite thing is because I, I would love to play a, you know, dramatic role, but I would definitely love to have um, some sort of laugh about it, you know, and like, or like a Big Bang Theory. I love Big Bang Theory. It's a great series. And also, <laughs> comedies stay on the air the longest, so. <laughs> they stay on a long time. Yeah. I mean, if you got a Modern Family, like, if yeah. you were a series regular on that, you yes. are sitting pretty. Yes. Modern Family, Big Bang Theory, Friends. How I, I mean, Met Your Mother. Yes. Yeah. So, I would love to do something. Friends. Like that. That's yeah. at the precedent. Yeah. Of, like, I mean, the favored nations, like, we're all earning a million dollars. We're all earning the same. <laughs> right. Every episode. And that was back in the day when they did 22, 20 three episodes yeah. sometimes more so yeah. hi 22 million dollars yeah. <laughs> so I would yeah but I also would love like I'm not limiting to you know like I love you know my friend Maya she started on the foster she now has her show Good Trouble and she's making a mark in the LGBTQ community and yep. she's being an influencer on that way rather than just in social media and I would love to do something powerful for my community like that as well um, yeah because there's more you know we talk about diversity and, and representation TV but there's so and, and film too but yeah. there's so much farther we have to go we can't yeah. just go look we did a TV show look we did one movie right yeah. it is across the board all totally. the time moving forward for all time yes exactly till the end of time whatever yeah. that is because yeah. i think that's the one thing people go look we fixed it yeah we, fi no. we didn't fix it we, yeah totally <laughs> i agree yeah representation is a really big yeah. thing honestly it matters so much yeah yeah I I, even in dance too i you know i think people think a di dance is so diverse but i'm like a lot of times it's not right New totally York city ballet has their very first um young black dancer who's playing yes, claire for the I first know. time ever. ever yeah which is Crazy. Um, and Misty Copeland went to see her the other day, and Misty put it on her Instagram, and it's the cutest thing of, like, really? Misty talking. Really? Oh, I need to watch it. Oh, it's so good. It's, like, a bunch of videos and some photos. I would have cried my eyes out. Oh, yeah, I totally. still cry my eyes out when I interview Misty, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never met her, but I, like, I just, I think she's, like, astounding. She's amazing. I love her. And her feed is... Um, it's powerful because she talks yeah. about things and she goes, I still face this. I'm a principal dancer in American Ballet Theater. Yeah. And I'm. she's like, I still incur, um, you know, I'm faced with racism and things totally. like that. You just, Absolutely. Just because you reach a level. Yeah. It, again, it doesn't go away. So no, totally. I just saw, um, it's not really dance related, but I just saw that like, what is it? Like Miss Teen USA, Miss USA, Miss Universe, Miss America, they're all women of color right now, right? So great. She's so crazy. I was like, First time in history. Yeah. I, just, I know. Th that's the stuff that, like, it does. It makes you, like, tear up because yeah. you're like, it's so but powerful. you're just kind of like, whoa, like, I can't believe it's taken this long. But, I know. Yeah. You're like, it takes too long, but at the same time, you're happy it's yeah. finally happened, too. Exactly. So it's like, oh, yeah. both, I know both things. Are, you can fight one, fight the yeah. other, but I'm like, no, hopefully this opens more doors, but Yeah, and, like, ceilings. when, like, eventually when I have children and they grow up, they'll be like, oh, Mom, remember when, like, you know, you had your first black... Uh, ballet dancer black president black president yeah and and then to us it's so monumental but to them it's going to be like well that's Hopefully like history first president at some point yeah i mean it's got to happen at some like, point in yes, history come on, come i hope on. i'm alive to see it i don't yeah, know. I know me too <laughs> oh, man. i know we run the world don't we yeah no. we do. <laughs> you know.
<laughs> girls, girls, exactly. <laughs> well, Molly, it was so great to finally catch up with I you know, and have you here. So I know. I was like, I missed you over six well, years. I know. It's been crazy. I know. When you tagged me on um, that thing from Dizzy Feet, I was like, oh, my gosh. I haven't seen you in so long. So I tagged her, and I'll throw it back up on Instagram story so everyone can see it. But uh, it's a picture of Allison Holker mm -hmm. fixing your yeah. hair or something. Yeah, like well, I had extensions, and I think she was like, my weave was showing or something. And <laughs> she's always, had, always got my she back. Big sister. And yeah. everyone was such a baby. And I said, Nappy Tabs had London there. London might have been about seven, eight months old. Yeah, just was tiny bitty. little boy. Yeah. yeah. So oh, it was a while ago. It was one of the last few galas that they've they've yeah. done. So they've moved yeah. on. To, it's now American Dance Movement anyway. It's not yeah. even Dizzy Feet anymore. Yeah, it's not Dizzy Feet anymore. Yeah. Yep. Crazy. Crazy. Well, I know. Don't be a stranger. Come I here will. anytime. Yes, please. This is so fun just to like chat and like hang out. I that know. Was it was so good to see you. Thank you. you if too. people aren't following you on social media, you can let them know right there where they should follow you. Yes, you can follow me on all social media at Molls Gray, M O L L S G R A Y Y. And on TikTok is Molly Gray, M O L L E E G R A Y. I love that. We should yes. be talking about TikTok now too and go I say, know. hey guys, TikTok too. <laughs> yes. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. We will be back next week um, with our final episode of the season. And it's the first time we have a principal dancer from American Ballet Theater. It's not Misty Copeland, you guys. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I know. Can you imagine? I'm like, I, they are in town. So that's why I was able to grab one of the principals. So yeah. super excited oh, about that. I know. We want to thank Dance Network and Popcorn Talk for hosting us today, of course. And for all your dance news, check out dancenetwork.tv. We'll see you all next week. Bye, guys. From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network.